Hello, Edu Magicians. Welcome to the Edu Magic Podcast with your host, Dr. Sam Fesich. Dr. Sam is a professor of education, author of Edu Magic, and a pumpkin spice latte fan. This podcast is designed for pre service teachers. Remember, friends, teaching doesn't begin at graduation, but during that first class at 8 a.m. Let's get this party started. Hi, I'm Kim LaPree from the Teachers Need Teachers podcast, a part of the Education Podcast Network, just like the show you're listening to now. Shows on the network are individually owned and opinions expressed may not reflect others. Find other interesting podcasts at edupodcastnetwork.com. Hello, Edgy Magicians, and welcome back to another episode of the Edgy Magic Prod- Podcast. Today, I have with me some all-star educators from Australia, and they are from Pracky. We have Liam Alysiums and Scott Harding joining us today. Uh, guys, would you mind introducing yourself to the crowd, share a little bit about your teaching story, and then we're going to jump into what Pracky is. So, Scott, do you want to get started? Well, it looks like I'm going first. Hello, everybody. I'm Scott Harding. I've been teaching for 22 years. Um, I'm a qualified English and French teacher. Um, I've taught in different countries now, um, Britain and Australia. I actually started teaching um, in France as part of my degree. I taught um, French students English. And um, I've been involved in a lot of sport coaching as well. I do a lot of soccer coaching. And, uh, yeah, look, I'm, I'm very interested in the pastoral side of, it, of education about bringing students through and making them realize their potential, but also student teachers and also beginning teachers in the first five years of their career. That's a real passion area for me. We're very concerned in this country, and as I'm sure you are, um, with the dropout rate in the first five years of, of, of careers. And uh, for me, this is now a bit, of a, a bit of a cause that I'm really excited about exploring. Excellent. Thank you so much, Scott. Liam, what about you? Uh, good day, everyone. My name's Liam Lissiams. I'm the the Australian side of the trifecta of accents in this episode. <laughs> I'm just beginning my, basically my journey with education. I'd, I'd like to class myself as a bit of an entrepreneur, but that sounds a bit self-obsessed, but I, I like to, to find new ways of doing things and, and I address gaps in the market or, or things that need addressing. Um, so when I was starting my pedagogical career in teaching, I could just see some things that were happening amongst my peers that I couldn't rightfully ignore um, any longer. So my passion is in beginning teacher support. So everything that I've done in education has always kind of been about benefiting the system and trying to change the system to, like Scott said, stop that teacher drought and make teaching one of the best professions and, and give it the reputation that it deserves. So one thing that has really been the product of that has been Pracky, which started with Scott um, last year, but it's really coming into fruition now where we create digital media and run events for beginning teachers, um, from beginning teachers, and we like to communicate in the way that young people like to communicate with. And I think the way we go about it really cuts through the market and it's something I'm really excited to see grow. Yeah, I have to agree. You guys do so much stuff on Instagram and YouTube. It's a great way to reach that audience and they're always scrolling through video and it's a great way to get to them using content and a technology tool that they're using all the time. I think it's a real strength of ours. When we were first starting out, we were trying to discuss what medium it should take or or how we should go about it. And one thing that we agreed upon was that it had to be authentic. It had to be a true voice and we couldn't be selling either a product or an agenda and that's something that is still a core pillar of what we do today. So it, it's sometimes we do give some home truths because teaching isn't a bed of roses every day. But one thing that we try and do is make it practical, real world and positive and really communicate in the, the way that teachers actually communicate with and, and find the information and advice that really cuts through and is going to help the most. I think that's the one thing that people have responded with, I think, and, and making those little Instagram videos is just one little example of that, I think. That relatability as well, you know, the idea of if we, if we come across as real life human beings, you know, with, with foibles and et cetera as well, that's all the better because, you know, it's a very isolating profession at times, particularly early on in our careers, obviously, as you, as you well know. Um, and so to feel that there's a kindred spirit out there to help you would be mm. pretty quite nice. If I was starting my career now, this is what I would look for. Yeah, definitely. It's so true. I mean, 
I've had a few different endeavors in the past and, you know, they just fizzle out and die very quickly. But with Pracky, the response was amazing, really. It's something I didn't expect. We started doing these events. We started making these videos and the response we got was amazing. It caught me off guard, really. You know, some days I'm busy with uni or things of that nature and um, I don't have time to do something, yet that's the day something kicks off without even me particularly doing anything, which just talks to the the need for something like this and something that you've created as well, Sam, is online teaching um, yeah. support networks. I think it's, it's growing and it's so teaching is better for it. I agree. There really is a, um, a gap for those pre-service teachers. Yes, there's university, there's college, there's courses and student teaching, but there's not much else out there besides what's in your university and, and people who um, are going through that process with you. So having that professional learning network, being a connected pre-service teacher is critical. I know here, here in the States, we have um, students go through their coursework and then their fourth year, they do student teaching and then they're off in their first year teaching it might be a little bit different over there with um, there's NQ- NQT and PGCE and uh, PRAC and all kinds of stuff. Can you give a quick rundown of what that looks like for a student who is going into university to be a teacher? What does their trajectory look like? Well, certainly from where I trained, I trained in Britain. So over there, we have what's called the PGCE, the Postgraduate Certificate of Education. So you do your base degree. So if in my case, it was a dual BA honors degree in English and French. And I spent a year in France during that time, which is where I started to realize that I'd like to become a teacher. And then after that, you do a year of, of teacher training as such, and then you become a fully qualified secondary teacher. Now, the problem with that is you may have no idea about pedagogy whatsoever, and you're thrown into a first prac, which is six weeks long, and that sorts out exactly who's going to stay on the course, you know, because you're usually in, you know, a quite challenging school. Um, if you've put down that you can travel, expect to be traveling an hour and a half a day there and back, you know, it can be quite difficult. And so, you know, it's quite confronting if you don't really have a huge amount of idea of what an education, um, I suppose, is a sphere is all about. You know, you're educated yourself, but can you impart that education to others? It's a, it's a big wake up call. For me, it was a little bit different. Um, I only graduated last year and for me, that's a, I did a four-year Bachelor of Education, it's called, um, and PRAC is interspersed all throughout those four years. But it's quite interesting when you first start, you're probably re- relating more to the kids in your class than the teachers in the staff room. I still had acne on my face from when I was in grade 12, and, and suddenly I'm in front of these kids expecting to be a leader in a classroom when before the only context I'd understood was being a student. So it does, like Scott said, in the current system, it can feel occasionally like you're chucked into the deep end and it's sink or swim, unfortunately, for a lot of people. Um, but it's it, universities do what they can and it's it's something that I think will continue to grow and change all over the world in terms of trying to find that best practice to actually support beginning teachers in that process the best way. And don't get me wrong, we're not trying to denigrate universities in any way. Of course. I mean, they, they do a good job in preparing people. I think they're, they're probably better at theory than practice. I'll be perfectly honest with you. I think that, you see, you know, you can talk about overarching theories, you know, and, you know, I suppose the applicability of those theories is tested when you're actually out in the field. This is the thing. So the things you are taught in university lectures aren't necessarily the things you encounter on a day-to-day basis. So, for instance, on my first prac, I actually encountered a lot of gypsy children, Romani children, who um, I wasn't prepared for. I'll be perfectly honest with you. And they had challenges. So the traveler lifestyle being as specific as it is, I I had no idea how to go and research it. I had no real idea. So I had to think about how best to access those children and think on my feet a little bit. And that was actually quite a demanding thing for me to do. First, first prac. I never really tried that before. So yeah, that was, uh, that was an eye opener. My very first prac was in an incredibly low socioeconomic school. Um, One of the if you want to call it the roughest schools in, in Brisbane, but it was really rewarding and I really enjoyed it. But like Scott said, I was thrust challenges that I'd never seen in my honestly quite sheltered life. I mean, I didn't think I was sheltered, but then I was with these students and what they had to put up with on a daily basis before even coming to school uh, was something that I was not privy to. So to have them in my class and then trying to support them and then be that consistent role model for them, it took a long time to kind of 
appreciate their needs and then to adjust to give them those needs. And it's something that a lot of beginning teachers struggle with because in Australia, these are the schools that need young teachers. They're the ones that are crying out, especially rural and remote. Australia's massive, massive country, yet everyone wants to live on the metropolitan coast, whereas there's all these cities actually inside in the desert and they're rural and remote they take days to get to and these are the schools that need teachers like that so it's a quite a challenge when you first get into it and it's something that I didn't appreciate when I was first starting my journey about how how dynamic the profession can actually be and I think that just goes to show that there needs to be a support system there for those future teachers, those pre-service teachers, where that's blending that that theory and that pedagogy that they're learning in their coursework and the application and the practical side of how they can see that that theory or that strategy or that technique play out in the real world with real students. And I think that's where Practi comes in and really can help support those future teachers. So... This is where we're going to jump right in uh, t- 11 minutes into the show. What is Pracky and why focus on those future teachers? What motivated you to start Pracky? Well, to begin the, the Pracky journey, it, it started when I was actually a Prac student and Scott was my mentor. And we were just spitballing after one of the lessons at kind of 3.30 p.m. We were just talking about the current state of my cohort and how I thought university was going and Scott's observation of how it was going from there. And we just kind of addressed a need that we, th- we both agreed upon. And I know, Scott, what did you think about that, that conversation? It had been percolating for some time in my mind because I'd, I'd, I'd been mentoring student teachers for a few years before Liam came through. And um I've been very lucky in the sense that all the student teachers I've ever had have been superb professionals, beginning professionals. You know, they've been very socially media aware. They're very literate. They know their subjects well. They engage the students. Fantastic. But I still felt that even though I was directly supporting them in the classroom, as soon as they left, they were just thrown to the wolves. You know what I mean? So quite a few of them I've stayed in touch with after they've left um, my mentorship. And a few of them have really struggled to find jobs and secure long-term jobs. Partly because I think that's the the nature of the workforce over here, but also because I think sometimes they're not prepared for things like interview technique or for, you know, things not to go quite as smoothly as they they might have done on the prac that they had at my school. And so I've always said to to any student teacher I've had, you need to go and teach in state education as well, not just private schools. Because over here we have state and we have private, right? And um, private schools have their own challenges, don't get me wrong. But I think every teacher, you know, in their time, certainly when they're starting off, should teach state and understand what it is that you're dealing with at that level, you know? I saw it firsthand when I was out on prac. I had peers of mine going on in this process with me and we had, we had our typical nightmare lessons as everyone does. Uh, the internet's down or you get paired with a substitute. You know, those usual things that everyone had. My one was that my kids had been at camp the previous week and hadn't had a chance to talk about it until my lesson. So they were just unruly from the very beginning, paired with a late-minute room change. It was a chaos from beginning to end. But luckily, I had a, a good, pretty good support network with me to put that lesson into context. For my peers they didn't have that context and something similar happened to a colleague of mine out on prac from the very same cohort, very same university that I was. And then on that day, um, the next day we came in and he, he wasn't there. And I asked why to his mentor teacher. And they said that he dropped out that night because the previous day he had a really bad lesson. And then obviously he didn't have that support network. Um, and he was actually found by his mentor teacher crying in the, in the toilets. Um, and that really impacted me. And I could see that we needed something to provide that context to people. Because if someone doesn't have a teacher in the family or isn't blessed with a fantastic mentor, they can say that it's all their fault, that they're not cut out to be a teacher, that they don't have the necessary skills to make it, and that everyone else is a fantastic educator, yet it's just them that's the problem. I was sick and tired of seeing it, to be honest, and I couldn't withstand it for very much longer until we had to plug that change. And that's where Pracky came to be. 
we wanted to be that context provider. We wanted to be the person to provide someone with a mentor if they didn't have it. We wanted to be that support network for people that fall through the cracks. And you can see how young teachers can spiral. And Liam's right. Liam's right. I've seen this too many times with young colleagues who've been in the profession a year or two years and suddenly they hit a roadblock and it might be the first challenge they've encountered in their career and they don't necessarily know how to cope with it. So Pracky, Pracky wants to walk with you. That's what we created. So Pracky.com is providing ongoing mentorship through symposium events. So if you want to come and ask those questions, it's usually those little questions that don't get covered in a unit or don't get covered in a lecture that will keep you up till all hours of the morning, creating the most stress. So we do symposium events where we get real world teachers that are in classrooms right now to come in and you basically have uncensored access to these educators for an hour and a half. And you can ask any question that you want. We actually don't provide any content ourselves. We're just a vehicle and we are used to get all of those little nitty gritty questions out of the way before you go out into the big bell world. And then the other thing we do is, as well is create ongoing media for these people to access when and where they need it. You know, if they do, if they can't sleep and they are up at three in the morning, we're there. We can, they can go to our YouTube channel. They can go to anything that we, that we create and they can engage in something that will put their mind at ease. So it's basically providing what we think needs to be there in the ways that people want it. I love your mission of just giving back to that next generation of educators in any way that you can through accessibility, through the symposiums that you uh, discussed, which I want to I want to now take a minute to for you guys to share a little bit about what those are. For some reason, when I was out on prac, no matter how much I planned, my timing was always off. I always finished 15 minutes early or I over planned and I probably had a whole week's content crammed into one lesson. I think you overshot by three lessons. So it, it, so that's what I wanted to want. What I wanted to know, and people, other people wanted to know. Or what if I do? What do I do if I'm not clicking with school culture? Or what do I do if I? There's one particular staff member that just seems to have it out for me for some reason. Um, those are the things that I think that we can connect with at a deep, deep, deep level that I think makes us cut through um, a lot of the other PD out there. Uh, it's, it's the level of empathy and understanding that we have. And then to communicate that in 21st century uh, methods as well. I mean, you're doing a fantastic job with podcasts. I think podcasts are the future. But Absolutely. I mean, it's it's something as uh, it's, it's quite rare to see um, someone creating modern content in the way that people like to communicate with. I mean, why can't teacher PD be an Instagram video? Why can't it be a tweet? Why can't it be a Facebook story? And popping up in in ways that people appreciate, but also, right. but also don't expect. I think that's that's something that people have connected with. I mean, we're now chucking videos up on TikTok. <laughs> why not? Wow. You know, wow. there's there's no reason. There's no wow. reason why. My daughter's gonna love. It. I think and the most important thing too. I think for us is that we're accessible. So I, I think one of the most important things from my perspective is because I'm still in the classroom. I, I have something I, I feel that is of value that we can impart. And it's the same thing with every time we go to a symposium, we always have a range of experience on the stage. So we have right from the very beginning of a, of a career all the way through to principal on the stage. So it's almost like the seven ages of man up on stage. Do you know what I mean? And so you get questions fired at you. And I think that's the thing because we're still in the, in the profession. We're not detached from it. Do you know what I mean? We're actually living it. And I think that, that then helps a little bit because I think there's a little bit of camaraderie between the audience and the and the panel at that point, I mean, you do get fired some very interesting questions mm. that you have to respond to in real time. So Pracky solves this, it plugs this gap, like we had said earlier, and I'm sure we can all think about a time, you know, we were all first year teachers, we were all student teachers at one point, some of us more recent than others, but what was a time during your early career in which you felt that you really would have benefited from something like Pracky? Uh, probably at the end of my second year, I think. The first year went by so quickly. It was a blur. And I was teaching three different subjects, English, French, and PE. And I was so busy. And we had like, school inspection at the same time in that year. Um, it just went like a blur. The second year, I had a bit of a slump mm. towards the end of the year. And I, I felt like I was running out of ideas. I was quite concerned because I felt like I had no petrol in the tank. I was going, well, I've, I've exhausted this idea. 
where do I go next? And it was about planning a series of lessons, I think. Do you know what I mean? At that point in time, I needed somebody to just sort of just, just walk with me. And, you know, I, I sought out mentorship in the end, but somebody should have identified that, I think, in the school before I had to go and, and, and find external mentorship with that one. I said, look, you're struggling a little bit in your lessons with your middle, middle ability students here. What can you do to extend them a bit better than what you're currently doing? And I got through that slump and, you know, I fought through that slump and I was, I was proud of the fact that I did. And I would have liked to think that had I identified somebody like that today, there'd be better support in place. I think teachers generally are much more aware of each other's well-being now. I think are a little bit more aware of um, the impact of, of outside social factors into, into the classroom um, with colleagues. And I think that would have been picked up a lot better today. It totally does. Thank you so much. And Liam, what about you? My pracs were either <laughs> one extreme or the other. I had people saying, oh, you're so great. We have to get you back again. Perfect report. Oh, this is so awesome. And then I went to the next school and they literally couldn't get me out of there quick enough. It was so, oh, yeah, exactly. It was so confusing as someone in the early careers. And when I needed pracky was when we created pracky, ironically yes. enough. There was one particular prac, Scott would know it very well, where there was just, it was the worst time for me to be in that school. There was some other things going on at that time. And I walked in as kind of this naive young kid. Um, and there was just a disconnect between the school. There's The school culture wasn't right for me. And that was really hard. It was really tough. Um, there was disagreements that I had with my mentors and uh, the head of the department. And that you know that some real big confrontation would happen in the morning about the way that I was going and then I had to go teach for the rest of the day and it was it was tough sometimes I needed to just take a break you know go to the lose for a bit and just take a few deep breaths because it was hard going in every day to a place that you felt kind of all alone almost um and then you would go and obviously the biggest mistake is to go on Facebook during that time because every one of your peers makes it out that they're having the best prac in the world, that they are being offered jobs, um, that they're, the kids love them, the kids are giving them wine and chocolates and it's, it's, it's a, amazing. But for me, it, it was very easy to understand why mm -hmm. someone might go, well, what's wrong with me then? I nearly became a statistic. Um, I felt myself getting burnt out. So I can have a deep empathy for how some of the students that we were working with. But luckily, I had people that could see it from a, a different point of view as well and kind of see what I was trying to do. Because sometimes you just need someone that's just not involved whatsoever to kind of go, well, yeah, you did do that badly. Or someone that goes, well, maybe they kind of weren't being fair there. To have that outside voice is really great and then with the rise of online communities with um, teachers like yourself doing podcasts like this or facebook groups or pracky or whatever it is that's luckily getting more and more common where people can reach out to people that aren't in their immediate vicinity and get that context luckily it's happening more and more and that actually happened over on instagram there is a, a pre-service teacher who got this feedback from her college supervisor and she was just so distraught. And so I went and I, I supervised student teachers. So I went and I commented and I said, well, let's, let's, let's look at that feedback and maybe, you know, look through it from a different perspective. So I was able to connect with her and share, okay, well maybe that part didn't go so well, but maybe ask for clarification on this, this other part of feedback. So maybe not take it so personally um, that it, and think about, they want to help you succeed. And what are some ways to do that? Maybe the way they wrote it down or said it didn't come off great, but there's something there that might need to be worked on or, or went really well that can be explored a little bit more. Turning a weakness into a strength. Do you know what I mean? How is that possible? You know, so you look at it and go, okay, well, I don't need to emotionally filter through that. You have to emotionally play through that. I understand that. But when all is said and done, you look at what is say is being pointed out in a certain area for constructive improvement turn into a strength and you're always going to become a brilliant teacher if you do that it's, it is hard i can really empathize with that perspective that you were showing on instagram and good on you for reaching out as well i Absolutely. think it's so it's it's fantastic to hear um it can be i mean i've seen it firsthand myself but also with my peers um and family members where you when you're out on prac that is your world 
to go. It is Mm -hmm. so stressful um, and it's a big deal. You obviously want to do really well. It can be the funnest, most amazing, most rewarding time as well, but you've never been in pressure like that before and you've never so prac is your world for that four weeks, six weeks, eight weeks. And I remember there was one week where I literally spent every waking moment making lesson resources um, from, I got up early, made them and then rushed to school, did teaching all day. And then from the moment I got home, I worked and made re- lesson resources until midnight. And then I went to sleep and did it all over again. So it can be very stressful. And I'm, I'm thinking there's people that have similar stories out there. So when you go to that effort and then you get a fail at the end, it can be destroying, but you need those networks. You need those support networks. So guys, we're going to finish it up here. Where can pre service teachers go to find more about Pracky? The one-stop shop for Pracky. If you are, if you have listened to Scott and I and are at least intrigued with what we're all about, I think the best way is to come and have a look. I think it's all good talking about it, but like I said, with symposiums, you really have to be there to see what it's actually like with the rock music and the the red strobe lights and things like that. And our videos are quite unique. So I think the best way of seeing if it's for you is to come and check us out. The easiest way to do that is pracky.com. One thing that I would like to stress is that it doesn't have to be pracky. It doesn't have to be us. We'll be there if you need it, but I would implore anyone that's feeling like under a bit of stress or under a bit of anxiety or feel like they're walking alone at the moment to go and find an online support network for teachers that suits you. It doesn't have to be us, but we're there if you need it, but find something that works for you within your context. I think that's the real, the real message here. Thank you so much guys for your time today. And I will post links to all the different places people can find you online. And this was an awesome conversation. I know my listeners are going to enjoy it as well. Uh, Thank you so much. That's all right. Anytime, anytime. Well, there you have it. All about PRAC-E, the way to support and encourage future teachers. During this interview, Scott and Liam share all about their experiences and importance of their work in supporting new teachers. Are you interested in learning more about PRAC-E? Check out the show notes down below. You'll find ways to connect with them through their website, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and their podcast. And don't forget, if you're in the area, check out their symposiums. Have a great day, and remember that you have the edgy magic within you. And there you have it, edgy magicians. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe and share it with your friends. For more edu magic, check out sfesich.com and follow Dr. Sam on Twitter and Instagram at sfesich. Until next time, you have the edu magic within you.